So I've been asked to look at this thing here, which is a temperature controller. They come in different form factors. You've got this style, this kind of square shape. We've also got rectangular ones as well you can get. Now apparently this was actually in use, and then it just basically started misbehaving and all the smoke came out. We're going to put it apart and see what we can find. This is fairly old. I'm not quite sure what year this actually is. It's marked on it somewhere. But these are the pinouts on the back here, or connections I should say. So we've got to pull this thing apart and try and get into it. And this has actually got a whole bunch of liquid on here. So I'm guessing, in fact we've got this liquid here. I'm suspecting that's electrolyte and that's a capacitor which is blown up. I betcha. So I think they're in the way of us opening the casing up at the back. Because we've got a separation line just here. I'm also wondering about the front here whether the front panel has to come off or not or well, this front assembly will come off I'm not quite sure if I have to sort of get in here and leave that off as well I'm not sure we'll start at the back and see how that goes first it might go backwards really have no idea right there's a rear piece which has got about the two connections on it must not get these swapped over shouldn't do anyway should be pretty obvious for the stickers I'm guessing this all slides out the front so there we go just like that there's definitely a lot of liquid in here so I do believe a capacitor has blown up and it's this one here. See that bulge on the top and this extruded bottom there. See that's popped out there. So yeah, that's likely what's gone. So this might be an easy fix if it's just a capacitor. It maybe it still functions, just the capacitor is fried and that's what made all the smoke. It's quite likely. We need this button here. It's always a capacitor. Let's swap this cap out. Hopefully we've got something compatible. What is it? 105 degree rotor, I can see that much. 400 volt. 10 microfarad. Hmm. Let's see if I've got something. So the construction is actually quite nice. It all just folds out. Also be careful not to damage these ribbons because that'd be a bit of a pain to replace those. I mean it's doable obviously but be a bit of a pain. This means I can have a closer look. Now we've got all this splatter on this side of the circuit board here from that top of that cap. It's all going over there so this one is flushing out and cleaning. And there's a bit of view of that cap there. And all the other ones around it. So I think that one there is also looking slightly bulged. So C53. I'll have to look and see if I can see if I've got replacements for all of these and just replace all the caps in it and then put it back together and I expect it will work then. I expect so. Alright, so remove the capacitor and yep, definitely looking a bit messy there. So whilst that capacitor's out, <laughs> there has a bit more of it still stuck on the ball just here. Just here, look at that. It's like, yeah, that's got to come off. So what I was going to do is put some IPA in there, and I'll give us a clean up the brush and get rid of as much of the electrolyte as possible because the electrolyte is corrosive, so I need to get rid of all that. And there's actually a trimmer there, so I'll be careful not to touch that. Put some IPA on this side, but I'm going to give it a scrub and stuff like that. And uh, I'm going to replace all these other caps as well with ones I've got available. I'm pretty sure I've got stuff to do the other ones. I doubt there's anything special about those. So I'll start the next capacitor here. It's a 47 microfarad 25 volt. I've replaced that with another one. I'm just going to say replace the other four as well, and at least then it'd be as good as new for a period of time hopefully. So the technique I'm using to get these out is just to put a blob of solder across these two pins and then just melt it and then just pull the cap out. Once it's gone through to the other side there'd be no resistance and it just falls straight out. Just like that. Negative was facing this way towards these connectors. Now I get the, the soldering gun and I suck the holes out with this. Ready for the next one to go in. Easy. The one I just pulled out was a 10 microfarad 63 volt. In case you care. What I'm doing is each time I pull a cap out, put some IPA on the board and giving it a scrub. So it's underneath the capacitor is also cleaned up a little bit as well because you don't want to have any residual electrolyte laying around. Alright, so that's that almost reassembled. I've got it halfway back together again. I'm pretty confident it will work. Pretty confident. So this is slide this back in so it's got a top marking on there. Let's pop back in. Here we go. So with a bit of luck, that will work. I won't know until I go and hook it back up again. Um, yeah, it could go bang, you never know. I could test on the bench, I suppose. I could do that. I think the first thing I'll do is test these capacitors and see how they all were. You know, it's actually taken them out. Got to make a stand for these things. There is one available. So this one is supposed to be 47 microfarad 25 volt. We've got a couple of these. So 48.8. That one actually looks okay. This one here. This is a 470 microfarad 10 volt. So 
So that's 516 at 0.5. Slightly higher in capacitance, means it's probably drying out. 9.3 at 1.8. This is a uh, 10 microfarad, 63 volt. Here's another one the same. This one's getting worse. This one's 2.7. So a bit of a difference between those two. So one of them is definitely on the way out compared to the other. 47.9, and this is the 47.25 volt again. And also we've got the original one which blew up, which is one I'm not expecting much from this one. There we go. Completely dead. So it's fully recapped, so it should be good for a few more years yet. Fingers crossed. Right, let's actually try powering this up and see if it what actually happens now. I don't have a thermocouple set up for this, so what if you don't put a link on the back there? It may or may not work. It may just give a nonsensical reading. A link might work better than open. An open would usually give an open scale, so like maximum temperature reading. It would be no good. It would give, a, give an error sensing open uh, thermocouple. So I'm hoping a link will work. I don't know. It might do. So I've got the multimeter here hooked up onto the relay outputs here. So this is the output power. So this will be switching. Basically what it does it controls a relay. So you've got three outputs on it. But two of them are alarm outputs. One is a relay output for control and it's got basically the, the contacts are open circuit from the rest of it, it's, it's all floating, it's all isolated. So basically the outputs from this are isolated from the rest of it, so all it does is it leaps through the relay, so you've got relay contacts available on the connections here, and that's it. So this controls the relay, and then you can loop through your circuitry on this connection on the back. So what I'm going to do is monitoring between the common and normally open connection on this relay. So if this relay is turning on off, you'll see it on the multimeter. So what I'm actually going to do is put this onto beeper, and it's currently showing as a connection, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll power it up anyway and see what happens. It's not your heart monitor, is it? Not yet. <laughs> so the controller itself is working. And it sends the temperature from the link. But that relay seems to be stuck on. So it's doing something. And your controller is, not, is now off. But that relay was not being controlled. So I might need to look into that bit actually. Not quite out of the woods yet it seems, but the controller itself is working now. Now when I pulled this casing apart I did actually stab the relay. I did put a hole in the side of it so maybe I bent the contact of the relay. It's possible I damaged it. It's possible. So I might have to look at that and just check it. So it's below that temperature now. Let me just try it again. Yeah, that relay output is stuck on. That could be a problem. Well, someone must fix the part from the relay being stuck. And I've actually got a connection between normally open and normally closed side as well. So I must have bent something. I think I, so I did stab it. So I must have bent something inside for the contact. So I'm going to have to pull that relay apart and fix that now. That's careless. Oh well. Right, let's try this again. I've done some work on the relay. And what it was, I, I had poked the relay when I pulled the casing apart and it had bent one of the contacts a little bit, so I've tried to straighten it out. Spent a bit of time doing it. It's not ideal. Really, I should replace the relay, but this needs to be working today. So I've worked on it, and hopefully it works now. We'll find out in a second. Um, and I will replace the relay later on. I have to order one and get it in and replace it properly. Anyway, let's see where we go. And here we go. Working. So it's trying to heat effectively. And it's probably got um, PID control on it, which means it will be trying to do it proportionally. But it's interesting the way the on is actually off. <laughs> it's the opposite. Anyway, I just need to make sure it's actually going to turn off. Because if it doesn't turn off, then it's no good. Worst case, I'll have to bodge in this relay here. Just wire it inside. It's a 5 volt relay. And this is the right voltage rating and stuff like that. So I've got one of these if I need to. Power's now off. No. See, it's sticking. That's no good. Uh, oh well. I have to do something with that relay. I'm going to have to bodge this one in until I can get a replacement. 
the end. Also I found a quick way of pulling this thing apart. So the back end part here which I tore apart originally, don't need to touch that at all because of the interconnections on the back here. I thought I might need to but turns out no you don't, you've got to prise the front off and then you take the assembly out like that, leave the rest intact. Wish I'd known that before, would have been a bit easier. Right so I've bought some replacement relay, it ain't pretty, it'll do the job until I can get a proper one. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. It turned on, that's working. There you go, that's cycled. Hopefully it'll turn back on again. Depends on what the PID setup is like on this thing. Because they have like a timing system, so it'll be like on and off for a certain period of time once it's close to the set point. Or it may not try and do anything at all when it gets close to the set point. I'm kind of hoping it's going to cycle. Doesn't look like it. No. Anyway, it's switching. Yep. Cool, it's actually responding to it when I'm actually in the set range as well. Excellent, so this needs to go back up to 136. That's what it was originally. Right, I'm going to reinstall this thing. It's a bodge, but it works. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. Get you later.